Oh, you've been hiding, I've been kicking some ass. <laughs> <laughs> Anna and the Apocalypse is directed by John McPhail, the director of Where Will We Go From Here? And the film is a zombie musical, which is also a bit of a Christmas movie. And it's all about this school with many different students. The movie starts off somewhat of a musical, and then as the film progresses, a zombie apocalypse starts. And thus, we have a mixture of those, a bit of John Hughes aspects inside of the school setup, and a bit of John A. Romero inside of the zombie setup. And it all mixes in a crazy, over-the-top way, which is heavily entertaining and... We just saw it, and this movie is pretty entertaining. I that that's yeah. that's the thing which I was enjoying. You know, you can look at this movie critically, but overall, the best way to look at it is just fun and just yes. really over the top in the best way. So yeah, o um, overall opinions for the way this movie's constructed. What, what do you think of Anna and the Apocalypse? I loved it. This is high school musical with zombies. Exactly. And it's wonderful. It was, I, I like, I think we talked about this. Like, I liked that there's no fat on this movie. Yeah. This movie gets straight to the point. It, 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 it has some setup at the beginning. You get to know who the characters are. You know where you are. And you know what the, what the overall story is. But it just kind of jumps right into it after that. Like, you get, like, yeah. you get some song sequences at the beginning. And then, like, you get this wonderful song... <laughs> where our main character is blissfully unaware the world is falling apart around her. One, and <laughs> It's one of the best scenes in the entire movie because this movie is a musical and it's also a zombie movie. And that was the blend of both. Both genres mixing. Yes. And it does not work. These people are just gleefully dancing around, singing, like, happy-go-lucky about their lives. And, like, you have the opening of Dawn of the Dead directed by Zack Snyder with, like, <laughs> cars crashing into each other and, like, families, like, running out of their house and looting other houses or when the and the character has headphones on there's like people behind her like ah, what are you doing like beating each other <laughs> on the heads with hammers it's oh, gosh. great so great like the musical aspects and the zombie aspects it works yes. it does not feel like two separate movies Sometimes it has trouble shifting in tone, mm -hmm. but it all blends together as a genre. It yeah. really does mix, and that, that was the thing which impressed me the most. It's fun, and it's also kind of terrifying at points. It's a little yeah. freaky, but, you they know... Managed to, they managed to handle both the humorous side, the emotional side, and the horror side in ways that all really work well. Like, what I, anytime I watch a movie where... It's clearly like homaging like stuff that's been around for years. It's always nice to watch the movie and realize that the people that are making this are fans. Yeah. Like they're very literate in the language of zombie films and very literate with musicals as well. So you get like you get this movie is clearly made by people who really understand the language of movies like that. And so you get scenes that really work well. Um, because like I love there's like there's like moments where like zombies are like kind of hypnotized in front of televisions like uh, and like you get plenty of moments where it's clearly like very Romero type satire when it comes to the zombies especially like, Dawn, like you, you mentioned Dawn of the Dead like that's like the granddaddy of like basically satire using zombies yeah and then you and then you have the musical satire with like the the way that like the way that those movies are kind of happy-go-lucky, like, unrealistic world, like, right. mixture with the real world, there's a lot of that, and that was the thing which nailed it for me, was the song, where I'm like, this is great satire of both zombies and musicals. Yes. And there's even a lot of John Hughes stuff, like the principal, who stole oh, every yes. scene he was in, like, this guy... I think his name is Paul Fry, the actor. He is... I I've seen him in Game <laughs> of Thrones. He plays, um... Oh, he plays one of the red priests. If you if you look if you Google him, you'll find him. But he was easily one of my favorite characters in this whole movie. Basically, if you've seen The Breakfast Club and you and you know the principal from that movie, um, he was basically harkening back to that kind of character, yeah. like this like total, like ridiculous tyrannical principal. <laughs> Yeah, who like is it. completely insane and just yeah, like Paul Gleason meets Dr. Evil because it's going to be filled we'll keep going you want another one say the word just say the word instead of going to prison you'll come here 
One million dollars. Well, that was basically <laughs> him. He was just... <laughs> That's exactly it. He's just so over the top and insane. You can't quite take him seriously, but he's just... He's one of those love to hate him. You just want to sink your oh teeth. Oh my gosh. Him. He was oh, clearly having the time of his freaking life doing this role. Absolutely. And it worked, yeah. So positives like the satire is great so yeah. let's talk a little bit about the music it's yeah it's great it does not feel conventional i i noticed that a, a lot like that was something i was i was looking i'm more critical with movies i was looking at a lot of different things and i was like you know this movie's not perfect but that was something which i was picking up in some of the earlier musical numbers is it was oftentimes just music it was oftentimes like cut back to different characters music is right over not a lot of show beyond that i felt that sometimes the music was used a little bit as filler because a lot of this movie is played conventionally and if you cut out the music you would not have like enough to make a film you'd have a basic zombie comedy True. and like the music at some points feels like filler but at other times it mixes really well and fits into the film yeah and oftentimes can be really dramatic and and fun to watch yeah. but the music itself, like all the songs, like there are a lot of different songs in the album which stand out. Some are funny, some are like nice, some are catchy, like yeah. the music's great, yeah. And I love that, like one of the important things about musicals is that oftentimes musicals can get criticized for maybe not having like big dramatic emotional moments like a normal movie would, but the important thing about that is like that's what the songs are for. The yes. songs are there to essentially be story shorthand where you're able to get into the character's head and be able to see what they're feeling and what's really happening with the character. Like, there's this great song uh, in the middle of the movie where um, a character that, to this point, you really don't know much about, but he's just kind of this unlikable jock. Uh, he has this big song number where he's <laughs> killing zombies. And it's funny, but it also is insightful. Yeah. Um, and you get, and basically, it's the first time you get a glimpse into his character um, whereas you've just kind of been seeing him from kind of the outsider's view. So the songs are used the way that songs are meant to be used in a musical. They're used to build character and move the story along in a way that makes sense. And it's, and on top of that, like one of the things I love about this movie is that the zombies actually feel like a threat. Yeah. Like, I was worried going into this that it would be fun and just kind of cheesy, but it would just kind of have zombies in the background, but there's threat and there's danger. And uh, in many cases, there's situations where the characters are in situations where they are in danger and may not get out of it. And like, it did feel threatening. Like there's that really entertaining action sequence in the bowling alley early in the film. Like right. with some really like grindhouse-esque like violence used yeah. inside of it. But at the same time, even though this like fight scene is like way over the top, you still feel like characters could be in danger and there yes. are a lot of times where you're like zombies like come out like where you think the fight's over maybe a zombie will come out you're like blah and like right it's it never feels like the movie is bluffing it always no. feels like the movie can pack a punch and it does pack a punch a lot and the characters react the way that normal people would yeah like in, in a movie like this which is comedic there's going to be some over-the-top elements characters are going to go like ah, and like stuff like what that but when when characters are when characters are reacting to things they react like people would they react in horror like there's this great moment where there's a song um going on while the characters are basically trapped in a confined space watching the world around them burn yeah and they react the way that normal people would they just feel alone they feel isolated they feel scared and the song is really expressing their fear and the fear that you would have if you were just cut off from your family cut off from your friends and you don't know what's going to happen. And I love that. I love that the movie is funny, but it never loses the human element of, hey, this is a movie called Anna and the Apocalypse. People react the way that you would expect them to in a situation where the world is just crumbling around them. That was one of those musical numbers that I was almost thinking felt a little bit in line with the, the music video, where I was like, this is... <laughs> This is very much kind of like a, a satirical criticism. <laughs> Where they're all lined up. <laughs> yeah, this is very much like a satirical criticism towards, like, media for, like, teenagers <laughs> in high schools. I kind of laughed. I was like, this is kind of like a really small, like, short film musical video. Honestly, the whole movie felt like that. It did. Like, all the characters, even if the characters themselves, like, there's a character in the movie that, you're, that you meet early on who, I think she writes for the school blog or website, and the 
but the mani- the maniacal principle is gonna like prevent her from like talking about a homeless problem in the community and like a lot of the times stuff that she said situations that came up with her they were funny but they also they also sort of pointed out like kind of the idea of like getting outraged over things or like kind of like not like not seeing the forest through the trees sometimes when it comes to like maybe a social issue you're like so honed in on well the homeless need to be taken care of but oh yeah what zombie thing like there are things like that where like any in a, a lot of the stuff with social media and the phones and like i don't know i would say this i don't know how much of it landed for me deep yes but it was funny like it, the stuff they used with the satire of like the modern teenager yeah. was funny Movie's smart and funny. The heartfelt aspects, like, are okay. That's that's what I yes. would say. So, j- jumping a little bit into negatives here, like, I that's something which I want to talk about. This yeah. movie struggles with maintaining tone. It can be funny, and it can be... It mixes horror and humor. Mm-hmm. But jumping from tones can be a little bit uneven. There's, there's a lot of times where the movie pushes for the tear-jerking scenes, particularly in the third act, and... Sometimes it landed really well. There was one scene towards the end that I really liked, but maybe they push it just a bit too much because this movie alters around sometimes, and it can be difficult to figure out what tone the movie is going for as a whole. Even though the movie's genre is clear, the tone sometimes is just a little bit uneven. I'd I'd say that's my biggest problem, Mm -hmm. but overall, like, there aren't too many outstanding ones in this movie. Like, that's that's probably the clear line of, like, this is an issue, but overall, the movie knows what it is. It never falls apart at the seams. Like, there are moments where you are kind of jolted from one tone to the other. In my mind, the overall tone really is pinned down by Anna, the main character. Yes. Uh, like at the beginning of the movie, she w- doesn't want to go to school. Um, she's graduating. She wants to she's travel. In con- she's in conflict with her dad, and she wants to go travel and basically get away from things because she's also nursing the grief of losing her mother. And there's, I think that the through line that I got with her is life is messy, and you're not really going to be able to get get that clean break that you want, that clean life that you want. Yeah, and it's I I, I you gotta I, confront your problems. You gotta up. confront your problems straight on, and I, I it's it's nothing. It's it's not Shakespeare, but it doesn't need to be. <laughs> like for me, that was that was the thing that held the movie together. Is I really liked her. I liked I like I mean if you if yeah. you've seen the poster, it's her carrying the candy cane spear, and it's amazing weapon. It's like it a really inventive weapon oh for a gosh. Christmas movie like this. It is, um, and yeah, this movie's a Christmas movie, by the way. That's something it is. to toss out there. It takes place on. Today, when we are filming this, by the right. way, December twenty third, I laugh at that. I'm like, what a perfect day to be watching this. Yeah, it, it's it's a fun holiday horror comedy. It, like, it is. yeah, nice. It's like nice it, it it has like a bit of zombie land in it. Like I'd yeah. say, it has a bit of zombie land in it. Definitely some Romero, and it's it's just fun. Well, maybe I, even a little of Shaun of the Dead in this. A little style. bit of Shaun yeah, of the yeah. Dead. Yeah, it's I don't know. It's, it mixes stuff together. It mixes well. stuff together, and overall, I was really happy with it. Um, um, yeah. I think that negatives. What I would rec- what I would say is, I think I would agree with you that they they pull the tear jerking scenes maybe one card too many, um, and that I would say that the movie actually could have had a little extra to it. Yeah, I think if you maybe like I, I usually I usually don't push for movies to be longer than they than they already are. Um, cause usually I look at it as an editing problem, but I think I wanted more content. I wanted that... more, I wanted more time with the characters so that I could maybe latch on to something more. Cause I realized when we were filming this review, I didn't know who half the characters were. I couldn't remember their names. Yeah. And I feel like that is a, it's either a problem of editing or a problem of maybe there were scenes left on the cutting room floor where you spent more time with the characters and you got to just kind of like let them sink into you more. That's my point with the music. I feel like the music fills in a lot of the gaps in how much material they had. And I almost wish that they had expanded some of the material. Like you talked about how you like that this movie's lean and it is, it never drags on scenes, but maybe if the characterization was just a little bit more investing, then right, that would have helped a little bit. Like, there's scenes that there. The, honestly, the thing that's coming to mind is there's a scene towards the end of the second act where a character dies, 
and it's 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 horrifying the characters are really horrified and grieved by it and then all of a sudden it just cuts yeah and then you move on and i don't even think there's really a scene where they address it no and like, i remember when that happened and it was like oh crap and right. then and then it happens you're like dang and then it just kind of moves on and i was right. like i, I think if you had to... more stuff where they could just sit down like and take it in even for like like that character like if you just like maybe 10 minutes to like dedicate a little bit more time to him like e even that out throughout the plot like yeah it would have made that scene a little bit more investing and, and that's the trouble like i i I liked the characters, mm -hmm. but I, like the development was a little bit thin because this movie is like jumping from fun to music to fun to music, right? And the characterization is just like maybe five percent in between those. And yes. I'm just like, if you, they'd poured a little bit more into the characters, I think it would have been a little bit more wholesome of a film. Yeah. So. so maybe it's good that it's lean at the beginning. It would have been nice to have more flesh in the middle. Yeah. And speaking of kind of the different acts, I love the third act of this movie. Oh yes, it was. And I remember like the, you know the wonderful. opening. <laughs> the opening is like a little bit of like you know fun, like you know fifties style of musical, uh -huh. and then like the second half is kind of like the the whole George A. Romero style with like the zombies are invading, <laughs> and then the third is just absolutely balls to the wall crazy it honestly reminded me of the guest do you remember that oh yes Where they have I, the final showdown like in the school haunted gym. house like right so <laughs> such a I, that's a i love the guest yeah that's it's that's a really good point like yeah. similar in that like where it's like crazy they like throw everything like on this the floor. big colors and like it's like it's like we're it's it's like like the whole movie is pretty crazy, but the, it really gets crazy in the third act. Like I feel like the guest is actually the movie that I'm thinking of That's a great when I think to... of this movie. It's very stylistic, very fun in terms of the performances, very funny but intense sometimes, and it has a crazy third act. That's a great movie to compare it to. I, I didn't even think about that. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. Oh my gosh, fun and yeah, really yeah. enjoyable. So, I, I honestly, I think that that for me yeah. is, is covers it. Like even though this movie does have some flaws. Um, I think it's just really enjoyable. enjoyment factor covers a multitude of sins. Absolutely. Like it's, it's not something which is trying to be overtly amazing, but no. just it's, it's a movie which shoots for fun and it's absolutely a win in the fun category. Absolutely. I mean, the, the sad thing is, um, the cinema that we just saw it at, I think they're only having it in theaters for like a week. Yeah. So, I mean, if you get the chance, this is movie is 100% worth your time. It's a fun Christmas movie. If you have the time to see it. And it's pretty short. I mean, how how long was this movie? Not long. It's ninety two minutes. Yeah, it's it's an easy movie you can catch in the theater, and yeah. it's and I, yeah, I I want more movies like this, more movies that are just eclectic and different, and um, yeah, because and... like it's an independent movie. I like there are like so many oh production gosh. logos at the beginning of this movie. There must have been like eight or ten. There was one of them I think was like funded by the lottery or something like that. Yeah. Like what? And some studios that I know like XYZ but like there, there were just so many and I'm like, like this they, like they must have freaking blackmailed a lot of executives to get this made. I guess so. That or just like brought like change jars to schools like. Probably. And I'm like uh, good for them too that they absolutely. like got this movie made because it works. So yeah. I enjoyable movie which is fun for the holidays and just really nice experience so yeah I'm gonna go grades yeah so what, what, what do you think what would you give it I'd probably give it man I'm a generous person but seven out of ten I like this movie yeah. it was fun it was enjoyable it had some structure problems I think it had some issues of pacing and tone but overall, um, I was really surprised with how much I enjoyed the movie. I, I was expecting it to be funny. Um, I wasn't expecting to care a lot about the characters and actually like find some of the, like the heartfelt moments as sweet as they were. Um, it maybe pulls that card a little too much, but the movie had a lot more heart to it than I expected. And it was a fun, ridiculous movie to watch with my brother. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, seven out of 10, I'll give it that. Uh, the critic in me wants to go one notch lower, and I, I'd honestly consider that, but all, ultimately the fun makes up for it for me. It's, it's a movie which is not trying to be overtly amazing, but it's just the experience of watching it. It's just the fun, and just how you see it as a film. That's, that's what makes this movie so special. It's a great, fun, holiday movie with some really great aspects, it's a really entertaining soundtrack, and... It's just nice. I'm gonna go the same. I'm gonna go seven out of ten. 
I would definitely recommend this movie for the holidays. Like before Christmas ends, go yeah. see it. It's like it, it, it's a worthwhile movie to see in theaters. It's it's something which I would support because uh, these filmmakers like they're passionate. Yeah, and I, I I definitely think this movie is worthwhile. More so. movies like this should exist. Absolutely, it's it's a great movie. Yeah. So. Well, we're probably not going to see you guys until after the holidays are done. I think we have a review that we're pending that we still have to film. We need to get that ready. We're, yeah. we're like, we, we want all three of us to be able to film. We do, that yeah. One. We we've been finding that one of the things I've been I've been noticing is that uh, Evan and I will often be the ones that are doing our reviews, and it is three brothers movie reviews. So yeah. we're going to try in the next year to get more of all three of us, yeah. Um, so we can all film reviews together because that's what we really enjoy, and that's why we started this channel. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, we're grateful for all of you that um, have been watching watching and um yes. thank you for seeing this video and um we definitely look forward to taking this channel into the new year absolutely yeah thank you so much for watching this is this has been so much fun yeah i, I remember when gavin just started this from venom like just insisted we were film a review and then <laughs> we kept on going ever since then and yeah we, we love doing this so yep. yeah all right thank you so much for watching this is three brothers movie reviews and please subscribe to the channel for more videos in the future merry christmas guys <laughs> <laughs> nice. Oh, nice callback to the movie. <laughs>